Hello world and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series part 5.5. My name is Guillaume Cote and in this part we are going to edit the picture we used in the last video in order to give it some colors, personalized font and cool effects. And to do that we are going to use GIMP but before we move to GIMP I want to show you my splash screen just so you know that I'm using Blender 2.6 revision 41226. So we're going to use GIMP, that is a free open source software like Blender, uh, specialized in image modification, like, pretty much like Photoshop. And before I start, I just want to tell you that I don't want this tutorial to be a tutorial on GIMP and how to use it, so I won't explain everything I'm doing, and some explanations might be confusing if you're not used with the software. If it's the case, don't worry. There is, there are plenty of video tutorials on YouTube for GIMP and the documentation on GIMP on the official website is also very good. So let's get started and the first thing I want to do is to open my file. So I'll go in file, open recent, arielbd.tga and you might notice at first glance that we have this line of pixels that we didn't have in in Blender. And from what I understand from it is that at the start this line of pixel was hidden information that Blender was using in order to understand that this picture was a text object, was to be a text object. However, it seems the algorithm got changed because I have deleted this line and it doesn't affect the file uh, at all. So since these, these lines are making our are making our image longer than larger, we're going to delete them. And we're going to do that using our crop tool that is right here. And to do it, I'll press left mouse button at the complete top left corner and drag a square until at the bottom left of my game file it says 256 per 256. Like, oh, like this. Press enter to Tell game that's to concede, concert, succeed, to approve, let us say approve, to approve the modification. And now that it's done, let us say we would like to paint in pink on our image, you can see that it doesn't work. It's right here it says pink and right here it's all in grey. And the reason for that is that as you might have seen, our image right now is a grayscale image, which means that it has only one channel that is a gray channel that tells GIMP if the pixels are black, white or anything in between. And that's not what we want, we want to have colors. So to do that, we are going to go in Image, Mode and RGB. And now instead of one channel, we have three channels that are red, green and blue and now I can paint in pink in my image. But let us say we would like to add some transparency to our image. So to do that I will normally take my eraser and start to erase but as you can see I'm erasing in white. And the reason for that is that my layer doesn't have uh, an alpha channel. So we need to add one by pressing right mouse button, add alpha channel. And now if I go back in my channel, you can see that I have an alpha channel and if I start to raise, I raise in transparency. Which is exactly what we want. Great, so now we can have, add colors, we can add transparency and let us say we would like to add text, it will work correctly. However, um, the resolution of the file right now is really small only 256 per 256 which won't give us all the power we would like to have all the resolution we would like to have in order to have a personalized font. So what I want to do is to increase the number of pixels in my image to have more data to play with. So to do that I'll go in image, scale image and in width I'll write 1024. 
And 1024 is the power of 2, as was 256 per 256. And usually you would like, you want to keep your file format and powers of 2. It's pretty standard in the industry and how things are working. So 256, 512, 124, 2048, etc. So now that I have the resolution I want, I will press scale and immediately you can see that we have a lot more pixels to play with and our file is, is much more bigger. However, we multiplied by four times the number of pixels uh, in this direction, four times the number of pixels in this direction, which means we have 16 times more pixels and we have four channels instead of one, which means we have about 64 times more data than we had in our original file. And 54 more data means 54, 54 times more data for Blender to load at each frame. So that is a lot, and that's certainly something to keep in mind. However, since our computers are begin are becoming more powerful and more powerful each year, it is not that much of a big deal. But I wanted to tell you, just so you keep in mind, that when you increase the resolution of your image, you also increase the number of work, uh, the number, the quantity of work it will take to Blender in order to proceed with it. Okay. So now our file is all as we want, and now we want to add some text in it. So to do that, I'll select my text tool, press somewhere on the screen, and start writing. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And for this tutorial, I will only do the letters, and uh, the numbers, sorry, because it's only what we are using in our game right now. And let us say I would like to have another font. And to do that, I will press on the font button here and scroll in all the options. If you would like to download a personalized font because the fonts you have in these options are not enough for you, you can go on the internet and one great site to download fonts is Font Squirrel. And it's a Font Squirrel is a website that I I have taken from a video tutorial made by David Ward on Blender Cookie, Blender Cookie, and the website is very great because all the fonts in there are free and you can use them for commercial purpose without having to give credit to the people who have made them. The only thing you don't have the right to do with them is to distribute the font as it is. And I think you don't have the right to modify them here. So another great site for having found that has a lot more, more option than Font Squirrel is DaFont. However, DaFont.com um, don't won't let you use all the fonts for all the purpose you want. So when you download a font, you have to be very careful of the license the font is copyrighted under. So let's say we would like to download the font from Font Squirrel. All we will have to do is to select the font we want, press this download TTF button, and it will uh, download a zip file. And in this zip file, you will have all the .ttf file, and you just have to press on it and press the install button, and the font will be in your computer and you should be available the next time you will open GIMP. So the font I am using for this one is SF Tune Time Bolt and it is a font I have taken from Font Squirrel and, I w and the size is 70 and you want your, your size to be just a little well, are around the same size as the numbers. I recommend a little smaller for a reason I will explain later but as big should be do as well but you don't want your font your size to be larger you don't want your letters to be your numbers to be larger than the numbers on your file 
Oof, that was hard to say. So, now that we have our text object that is as we want it with the correct font and the correct scale, we want we have to apply it to an, to another layer because right now this is a text layer and we cannot edit the pixel so we cannot move the the numbers as we want. So to do that, I'll press this new layer button, add a new layer and leave it transparent. Then I'll move it down under the text layer, right click on the text layer and press on this um, merge down button. And now our text layer is merged with the new layer we have created and we cannot edit the pixels and move the numbers as we want. So that's what I'll do. I'll just move the numbers one by one by selecting them with my select tool and press Ctrl Alt to move them. Oops. Like this. And I'll do it for all the numbers. Try to do it quickly. Like this. 7 8 and 9. Here we go. And now we have all our numbers on top of the respective numbers. And uh, the last thing I want to do is to add a filter to have to add some cool effects to my text. And to do that, I'll press on filter, alpha to logo, and I'll choose neon. It will open me a script foo window. And I'll leave the defaults, the settings as they are. Press OK. And it created me this cool neon effect on my letters. So I'll remove our black background that has been created by pressing on the I. And what I want to do is to erase everything that is under our new letters. Numbers, sorry. So that when we use, we will use this file, it will be transparent under them and it will be transparent in the game engine. And right now I am destroying data and I am destroying uh, some letters and some characters. But I don't really care about this because I'm going to use this file only for the numbers. And now everything is okay and I can save my file by going in file and save as. By uh, the file we download at first was a TGA file but we want to use a PNG because PNG has an alpha channel as well but is compressed compared to TGA. So since it is compressed it will take much less data and much less memory space than if we were to let it as TGA. And instead of Arial BD I'll name it Arial BD2. Save, replace, merge visible layer. It gives me a lot of options and I'll leave them as default. Save, and it's just been saved. So now I can go in my, and I can return in Blender, go in my head of display scene, zoom on my, zoom on my characters, select one of them, go in my texture panel and change the, the texture rlbd.tga by pressing this open image button and selecting rlbd2.png and I also want to go in my material and select shellless because we don't have lights in this scene and now if I press P while zooming a bit for giving you a better view. You can see that it works and we have a personalized bitmap object. However, you can see that we have this very ugly um, that the neon effect is ugly cut by the limit of our text object. And this is the reason I recommended you to use smaller smaller numbers and it is because if the smaller is too big it will be cut by the limit of the 
character and it will give an awful result. So to solve that I'll go back in GIMP as I am already and I'll remove this neon glow then save again go back to Blender reload the image by pressing this reload button and start the game engine again and now we have we don't have the neon effect uh, anymore but we don't have the ugly limit that we had previously so this will be all for this tutorial um, we I hope you have learned something from it and that you have enjoyed it and I wish you a great day and I'll see you in part 6th